Hey guys, I'm um, just doing a quick update. I am having uh, going through a, a little phase of starditis right now. A couple of days ago, um, I decided I was going to start the Couch Dragon by having an Earth Designs Ramble Spangler along with Tracy. And here we are two days later, and this called out to me. So this is the Spicy Carrot. Um, 40 count fabric from XJU Designs that I showed a couple of video videos ago. I'm hoping you can really see how orange this is. It's like a burnt pumpkin. It's a dark pumpkin. Um, and it finally told me what pattern it wanted to use. And that is Peacocks and Posies from Rosewood Manor. So I got this in my big fat obnoxious haul from one, two, three stitch um, using a gift card that I received from work. So I'm working on this little guy right here. Let's call him Dimitri. I don't know. I'll probably probably give each and every one of them a name and forget about it. But I'm going to call him Dimitri. But yeah, this little guy right here is who I'm working on. He's smack dab in the center. And I did a lot of frogging on this this morning because I was trying to figure out what... I wanted to use as the colorway for this fabric. Um, and then I kind of went back to basics and I used a good old-fashioned color wheel. After frogging twice with two different um, two different colors of dinky dyes, frogging twice I pulled out my sulky threads and this is one over one on 40 count. The coverage is spectacular. Look at that. So this is one over one using um, the sulky threads. This is kind of like, I, I don't know if it's showing up correctly, but this is an emer emerald green. Um, going the wrong way. Sorry. Here we go. So these are the three colors that I'm using. I'm using an emerald green, a chartreuse, and a royal purple. I'm um, not quite sure that they're showing up correctly, but those are the three colors that I'm using. Um, but cho I chose those colors going old school using a color wheel. So if you guys don't know how to use a color wheel, the color wheel, color wheel will tell you what colors complement um, the color that you're looking at by going directly opposite of the color. So here I chose orange red because this is like a burnt orange. It's not a typical orange. Um, I chose a burnt red, the orange red, and across from that is blue green. So I went with something that was kind of like a emerald green um, because I thought it was a little bit richer than a teal. And then I chose the green yellow, which is the chartreuse color up here. And then down here, I went with the royal purple. That's how I chose the royal purple. So that's how I ended up with um, these three colors. For peacocks and posies and I think they will look amazing but yeah I'm loving the green on the orange and that's where I am so yeah this is 40 count fabric I think I mentioned in my last video how much I'm loving the higher counts 40 count 36 count I see I see why people love these it's small my mag guys are directly next to me. I'm using my mag guys. Um, but actually, I can see it also with just regular um, magnifiers. It works perfectly fine, but I definitely need something. I can't just stitch on this with my naked eye. Um, but that's where we are. But yeah, I'm using the Sulky Thread 1 over 1. And this is the um, 30 weight. Is it 30 weight? No, it's not. I'm lying. Oh my gosh. 12 weight. One over one. They said it's the equivalent of two strands. Um, but I think it's more like one and a half. But it's definitely perfect if you're doing um, 32 count. One over one. One over two. Or why am I saying one over one? I'm doing this one over two, not one over one. Um... 
I think this is perfect if you're doing like 32 count 1 over 2 or 36 or 40. Um, and that's what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm saying 1 over two, one. over one. I've been saying that all day, I think. And I've been very wrong. But anyway, here we are with the little sulky threads with a little peacock named Dimitri. And I just wanted to show that to you real quick. And again, this is going to be eventually one day in this lifetime. Peacocks and Posies by Rosewood Manor. Alright, that's my update. See you later, alligator. Hey guys, just doing a quick little update on my Peacocks and Posies. Just wanted to show you something real quick. This peacock, and if you've been following me on Instagram and... Facebook, you know what I'm getting ready to talk about. Just doing a quick scan over so you can see what I've been doing. But this peacock right here, oh my gosh, I had so many problems with this thing. But I wanted to show this specifically for Ingeborg because she just mentioned this issue on her video in regard to her aboriginal stitch. Stitch. Fish. So the problem that I had with this particular piece and you may or may not be able to see it she was mentioning on her fish that her stitches ended up going in two different directions and she could notice a difference at a certain angle and she was wondering if it was because of uh, the direction that the legs were going if it was because they were going in two different directions and it probably was because I had the same problem so with this particular peacock right here I started stitching him in the Q-snap. Fine. But then I decided that I wanted to move him over to my scroll frame and because of the length of the fabric, um, I had to, do the width of the fabric, excuse me, because of the width of the fabric, I had to put the fabric in sideways and stitch it sideways. So for some reason, when I was stitching it sideways, even though um, I knew I had to pay attention to the legs. I'm used to stitching from the bottom left to the top right. Um, and then going back and doing the second leg going from right to left. And when I turned the piece sideways, for some reason, I was so disoriented and I couldn't, I couldn't make my stitches go the way that I needed them to go because I was going the opposite way that I've been stitching for the past 20 years. So this particular peacock, um, see if I can zoom in here, has stitches going in all different directions. Um, the top legs, you can probably see it. You have some top legs going from left to right. You have some top legs going from right to left. Um, especially like right in here, you can really see it. But I'm going to zoom out a bit. If you tilt it, you see the color variation where it's like a darker green on some areas. Like if you look at the body of the peacock on the right, if you look at his whole body with his neck and his head and everything, it's a shade darker than in the plumage on the left. So if you can see that, it's like one shade here. And then it's really light here. And this is where all the problems began. And then there's some line. It's like right here. It almost looks like a divide. But you can see where I was stitching him on the Q-snap. You can see I stitched his whole body on the Q-snap. And this line going straight up and then over here. Can you see that? And then even across the top. And then right around this area is where... I was stitching it sideways. Right here it looks like I tried to catch it. I tried to catch myself and then I started doing it again. And once I got to this point where I was doing all of this area, like right there, if you really look, you can really see the divide. Um, once I got to this point, I just kept stitching and I didn't care anymore. Um, because if you're looking at it like that, well, you can still see it, but I mean, it's not, nobody's going to notice it if I didn't point it out. You know what I mean? A stitcher's eye might catch it, but no, nobody's really going to notice it. Um, 
if they don't know what they're looking at. They're just going to see a green peacock, and that's fine with me. But, um, yeah, I wanted to point this out. So these threads right here, you can tell I'm doing all different colors. This is the emerald green. This is the dark royal purple. This is the cornflower blue, and this is the chartreuse. This is Frio by um, Dinky Dyes in the Oops Pack. Same with this posy over here. And there's another one hiding underneath the Q-Snap that is in Mardi Gras. So both of those colors came from my Oops Pack. I'm just going to keep going on this until I get bored with it because I love it so much. But I just wanted to pop in and talk about that peacock and show that um, really specifically for Ingeborg because I know she was having the same problem with her fish and she wanted to know if it was because of the directionality of the stitches and I believe that it was because I had the same problem but it's okay these are now original works of art aren't they so that's it for now guys bye byes hey guys um, this is the crafty curator Leticia and welcome back um, today is world cross stitch day so happy World Cross Stitch Day to the only people in the world that really know how great today is. Um, so I know that we mention it all the time. You know, we talk about how much we love this community and how much we appreciate one another's support on so many different levels. Um, but I don't think I say it often enough. Um, I think it goes without being said. But on a day like today, it's not just about the hobby, it's about celebrating the friendships and the relationships that we have made. Um, like when you really think about it, the interactions that we have with people on Facebook or in Stitch Mania or on Instagram, there have been um, real relationships formed and friendships that um, are guaranteed to life, not guaranteed, but we believe will last a lifetime, even if we never even met, you know, and those are the types of bonds that have been created over this hobby. Um, like if we really stop to think about it, I'll speak for myself, um, and I'm sure many of you are in the same situation. Prior to getting involved with this community, I want to say four years ago, five years ago maybe, five years ago, I think I had two whips. I had um, an Orchids Dimension kit and I had my three Yorubian women. And I had a whole bunch of kits just stored away somewhere for a rainy day kind of thing. Um, and five years ago I probably never would have imagined the chaos that I'm involved in now um, because cross stitch was something I would pull out every once in a blue moon like during the warmer months when my knitting and crochet bug went away and then I discovered I didn't discover anything but I found this community and it started off with a Facebook group if any of you remember, Kevin, I don't know if you watch my videos, but I remember you were also in um, the Serial Starters and Disciplined Divas group. And it was, um, the the admin was a woman named Jeannie, who um, has since passed away. And I don't know if the group exists anymore. I don't think anybody carried it on. Um, but that was the first time I discovered a Facebook group or any type of social media dedicated to cross stitch. Um, and I would look at the posts and I would get involved and I was still kind of like, you know, interested, but not like into it. Um, and as I started getting more into it because I was motivated and inspired by, you know, the, the work that I was seeing in the group, I then found Stitch in May. Stitch in May was on YouTube and she was somebody I kept seeing pop up. I kept seeing a pop up like with cross stitch because I would watch you know those little cross stitch videos where it would teach you the absolute bare minimum basics right and then I found Stitch and May's channel and I was totally into it like she is really going through 
um, her experience with cross stitch and I was fascinated. And then I want to say I found Jessie Marie, Mrs. Milky Bar Kid, and Mackenzie. And those four women caused me to fall in love with what is now known as Floss Tomb. And it just started to grow and grow and grow. And then this guy came on the scene. And I think he was the first guy that I have ever known to openly admit that he had a love for cross stitching. And from there, we now have this multitude of male cross stitchers where it's not even something unusual anymore. And in my world, Garrett, you started that. Garrett started that and he came on the scene as this guy that loved the Wizard of Oz and loved cross stitching and then the next thing you knew he was talking about um, Katie and I want to say the other original admin I think her name was Angie and Angie, Katie and Garrett started Stitch Mania and Angie kind of you know, went off and did her own thing. Um, but Katie and Garrett started this little group, you know, with this idea to be maniacs, you know, stitch like maniacs for the first however many days of May, I think it was 15 or 5, I can't even remember. And look where it is now. And I can actually say look where we are now because they're the admins, but I think I speak for all of us where that's our community um, over 10,000 members and it's just amazing what I've seen grow over the past five years and I am just so grateful to be a part of it so that being said because of all of that um, and you know all of that history that I just shared with you I feel like if I were to ever travel abroad to Australia or New Zealand or Hungary or the UK or um, Scotland or the Netherlands or Canada, of course, Canada, I know I have a friend there. And I am grateful for that. So with all of that being said, almost the hobby falling by the wayside, I wish, wish all of you a very happy World Cross Stitch Day um, because it is cause for celebration. So that being said, I'm moving on. So I'm officially welcoming you to my big fat obnoxious haul video. A lot has happened over the past couple of weeks since um, I filmed. And by a lot, I mean a lot of haul and not a lot of rotation. On July 29th, I started Peacocks and Posies by Rosewood Manor. And I haven't stopped stitching on it since July 29th. So here we are two weeks later seems like it's been much longer than that but it hasn't so here we are two weeks later and I've kind of stumbled into Stitch Mania's All Creatures Great and Small stitch along that started on August 1st and probably for the first time ever I'm a very active participant in this stitch along um, I usually don't get involved in stitch alongs not because I don't like them but because I can't commit to them um, see squirrels running by and I have new starts and rotations and I can't commit um, but I'm committing because I've fallen in love with this project um, so I ordered some fabrics that I talked about either maybe two or three videos ago from XJU Designs and there was this one fabric that I said was going to pick the pattern because it was so bold and brazen in its color 
it was bold enough to pick its own pattern and it did. This was the 40 count spicy carrot um, by XJU Designs and um, the, pad, the fabric picked peacocks and posies. So one of the things that I did, because I know everybody that's um, following me on Instagram or in Stitch, Stitch Mania, whenever I post this project, I might as well show you what it is, my progress rather. Um, kind of got to stitch it sideways and I don't know where um, in this video I'm going to insert um, where I talked about what happened when I stitched it sideways, but I'm stitching it sideways because it's um, a wide pattern and obviously I can't put my fat quarter on my scroll rod long ways. So this is where I am right now. Um, hiding underneath the roll here are two other posies and the rest of this green peacock. And right there, I'm working on, oh, look at me showing the pattern, guys. I'm working on the tail of another peacock. So this entire pattern, which of course I don't have with me, but if I remember, I'll insert a picture here of what Peacocks and Posies by Rosewood Manor looks like. Um, but the entire pattern is made up exactly of that, uh, Peacocks and Posies. And you know how people say that there's so much gratification when um, um, you work on a sampler and you have a bunch of small finishes. That is precisely what I'm experiencing with this pattern and I think it's why I love it so much. Um, and I'm going around in circles here, I'm getting to my point, but I think that's why I love it so much because each peacock or each posy is like a small finish and you're kind of trying to hurry up and finish up that peacock, which doesn't take that long to do. Like three of them, I think I did in one evening, or at least two in one evening, and then finished up the third one like the next day. But, excuse me please, it's a very different experience from stitching on a full coverage where you know there's not an end in sight anytime soon. Um, and I can't remember who, who coined the term chunky projects. Um, I think it was Caroline. Um, but as she said, I like chunky projects. And this is like the best of both worlds because it's got some size to it, but it's in parts. And I think that's why I understand why people have such a love for samplers. Um, maybe because of that. Maybe because of the variety, maybe because of the way that you can play with the colors and make it your own. Um, but speaking of colors, um, whenever I post, that's where I was going with this, I went down a huge rabbit trail, um, but whenever I post pictures of this on Instagram and Facebook, or Stitch Mania rather, by and large, the biggest compliment that I receive and what's mostly commented on are the colors. Because on this um, orange fabric, I'm using colors that I would have never thought of. Royal purples, emerald green, chartreuse, cornflower blue, and these two colors, like, by the way, really quick, this, this all, all the solid colors are sulky, the tw sulky 12 weight using one thread over two on 40 count, all of the solid colors, so that's the chartreuse, the emerald, the, the cornflower blue, and the royal purple. And then this one, this is Frio from the Oops Pack. Can I put something behind here? Make it a little easier to see, there you go. This little peacock with the multicolors, and this posy here, that's Frio, F-R-E-O, by Dinky Dyes in the multi-pack from the Oops Pack rather. And then this one hiding in the corner, you can't see it, but if you follow me on social media, you, oh look, I turned blue. If you follow me on social media, 
um, you'll see it's like a royal purple, a teal, and a um, like a goldenrod yellow kind of um, multicolor variegated. But that's also from the Dicky Dice Oops pack. Um, and that's Mardi Gras. So those are the colors that I'm using, and it's all one over two on 40 count. But those are colors that I never would have picked on my own, but I really wanted something to pop. And I kind of went back to basics, and I pulled up a color wheel. I pulled up a color wheel online. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. But when you look at a color wheel, the way that it works, you look at the color that's on the absolute opposite end of the spectrum. And th that's supposed to give you um, colors that coordinate best with the colors that you're looking at. So... There's the color wheel, if you can see it. So directly across from the orange, you see why I chose purples and greens and blues. That's why I chose those as my dominant colors, because that's what the color wheel said would look best with those series of oranges. And it does. Who would have known? I would have never picked those colors. But if you guys have a um, pattern that... Um, Sorry, I'm looking up the Peacocks and Posies picture. If you guys have a pattern that you're not quite sure um, what colors to use, try a color wheel. That's what. That's how I came up with those colors. It, I didn't pull those out of my head, you know what I mean? Um, and it obviously is paying off. But this is Peacocks and Posies because I'll probably forget to insert a picture. So you can see from where my big green peacock was and the little teal peacock right here oops right here you can see I'm already on the far left edge um, of the pattern so it's going fairly quickly I mean I only have three posies well actually I'm in the middle that emerald green peacock is smack dab in the middle of the pattern. The three posies beneath it are in the middle. And then the chartreuse peacock and the teal peacock, the emerald green one that I'm working on with the long tail, that's at the far edge of the pattern. So it's going pretty quickly for two weeks. So that being said, that's enough about that. Um, but back to my big fat obnoxious haul video. By and large, that's the meat and potatoes of this video. Um, in my last video, I said that I received a gift card um, from my job, um, and I used it for cross stitch, every last cent of it, um, and it resulted in a massive haul. And I was talking in my last video about how much fun it was to go on to one, two, three stitch, and just go to town. And it wasn't. It was my money, but it wasn't my money that I was spending, and it was its like a shopping spree. It was highly recommend it. It was awesome. Um, but I got, I was waiting for something to come in the mail today. So you're going to hear a little bit of crinkling because I haven't even opened it. So we're going to see this together, and I'm so excited. Um, so I waited to do this video to get this package. So let me talk to you about Jan's Stitching Necessities. I think I talked to you about her website on her Facebook page on my last video. And I showed this huge piece of fabric that I ordered from Etsy that had a bunch of um, women's, the bust of a woman's head um, silhouette. And it looked like she had an afro, and it looked like she had a gold necklace on. But it was the same silhouette, but it came in different colors, like gold and maroon and blue. And I just thought it was the most beautiful fabric. And I ordered it um, after Emily started showing her Mamalee bags. And I was thinking, I was like, I want to make a bag, you know. Um, but I knew my limitations, <laughs> where I would have to start with a Vana bag, because... Uh, yeah, I can sew straight line, I can glue on Velcro, but I cannot do zippers. I won't say I can't, but I'm not there at this moment. And I wasn't willing to experiment on that fabric because I loved it that much. So Jan Stitching Necessities, she has a different type 
of project bag business. Um, she has a type of business where you don't go online on, and you pick out bags that are pre-made or pre with fabric that already exists. She has a type of business where if you have a piece of fabric, um, I think she needs at least a half a yard for a project bag, which you might be able to get on Etsy for like three bucks. I got a yard and a half for like seven dollars total. It's crazy. I got a yard and a half of that fabric online for like seven bucks. It was, you know, not expensive. But she has a program where you send her your fabric and she will make project bags, standard or, or large. Grime guards of any size are like eight bucks. Any size. Um, forgive me if I'm, if I'm misquoting, but if you go on her page, she has a whole page that she says what her price list is. Um, she makes thread catchers, accessory bags, scroll rug covers, and scroll frame bags. So I was referred to her, and I went on her page. And I said, I have a yard and a half of this fabric. And, it, and when, let me go back. I went on her page and I saw her finished products. And people are very, very happy with them. And um, they look great. So I said, I have a yard and a half of fabric. As much as I want to learn how to make my own project bags, um, which I still intend to do because I got some fabric off of eBay, which I'll talk about in a moment. But with this particular fabric, I just loved it so much, I didn't. I wanted to give it to somebody that knew what they were doing. And I said, what can you make me with a yard and a half? Or a yard and a quarter, I'm sorry, it's a yard and a fat quarter. And she said with that, she could pretty much make a project bag, an 11 by 11 grime guard, an 8 by 8 grime guard, an accessory bag, and a thread catcher. very very affordable Jan's stitching necessities what she also does she also gives you the option where she can use her fabric and it's a little bit more expensive but it's 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 a quite a bargain compared to if you were to um, order other other bags online so I thought I would give this a go and she takes her fabric to make contrast, the contrast fabric. So first thing let me say, the customer service was excellent. She stayed in constant contact with me on um, via PM on Facebook. Um, she always checked in. She said because she had some orders going on right now, it might take up to three weeks. She told me maybe a week and a half later that she was getting ready um, to sew my bags, but she couldn't find the right contrast fabric and she wanted it to be perfect. So she asked me, would it be okay? You know, um, because she had an opportunity to go to um, another location to look at fabric. And I was in no rush. I was like, oh, that's fine. I appreciate it. But I even went so far as to ask her and I felt silly asking her this guys I'm rambling and I know it but I'm leading up to something so I hope you have your stitching in your coffee and you're just going for it right now um, so she asked me if it would be okay um, to wait you know a couple of days so she could go to this other location and look for her fabric and I'm like of course I trust your judgment because I've seen what she can do fine so she went to Houston um, excuse me, and she found the contrasting fabric. And I felt silly asking her this. I said, but can you do me a favor and not send me any pictures? I trust your judgment. I want to be surprised. And I felt so silly asking her that, but she said at least 75% of her customers ask her that same thing. Um, so like I said, you're my people. We understand one another. It's something about that surprise. I'm, I'm very excited right now. Um, and then she sent me another message saying she was going to stitch up 
everything the next day. And then that evening, the next evening, she said, I'm just working on your thread catcher because she sews those panels by hand. So very excellent service. She was in constant touch. I never wondered what was going on. Um, I reached out to her on PM. If I asked her a question, she immediately answered. It was absolutely wonderful. A wonderful, wonderful experience. Then she sent me um, a message saying that my package was on its way and sent me the tracking number and it was supposed to be delivered tomorrow, but it arrived today. And I literally got my hands on it like 10, 15 minutes ago. So I brewed a cup of coffee and I came upstairs and I set everything up. And now with no further ado, this is the Big Bat Obnoxious Haul video. So if you don't like haul, it may not be your jam, guys. So I have a whole bunch of haul and one project. So I don't know, it may not be that exciting to all, but to some, they might love it. So here we go. This is from Jan's um, Stitch and Necessities. I will link her down below. And this is the package that it comes in. Very pretty purple packaging with a big thank you for your order sticker on the front. I'm going to open it up. I'm so excited. I'm trying to be cool right now, but I'm not. It's like Christmas. And then you guys know what I mean. And it looks like everything is, I'm so excited, oh my gosh. It looks like everything is wrapped up individually, so it's definitely like Christmas. So this first piece that I'm pulling it out, um, I don't know if this is leftover fabric, I'm really not sure what I'm pulling out here. But here is her card, Jan King. Hopefully that will focus. Yep. Jan's Stitching Necessities. That's her plate. That's her page on Facebook. Um, and then it says, "Thank you for your order." She offers new designs every Friday. Hope to see you again soon. Yes, you will, Jan. Um, that's her card. And then I got a very nice little handwritten note. Very pretty. So, I'm going to read this. Letitia, I hope you love and enjoy these beauties. It was certainly fun sewing them for you. I wrote the grime guard sizes in a seam inside each guard so you will be able to distinguish sizes easily. Thank you again for your business. Looking forward to seeing you next... So, no, looking forward to sewing your next beauty. Please post pictures on my Facebook group and other social media or as you see fit. It helps tremendously. God bless Jan King. <sighs> Got the warm and fuzzies. I have the warm and fuzzies. So I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this is leftover fabric. So, wow. I think this was the fat quarter. So this was the original fabric. Oh no, I can see where she cut out parts of the bottom. So, this was the leftover fabric. I will do something with that. I might rock a headscarf or something. I don't know. I'll do something with it. Look how beautifully packaged this is. Can you see that big bow? Beautifully packaged. Wrapped in yellow tissue paper. It, it is like Christmas. There's another package with a bow. I'm containing my excitement and I'm acting like I've gotten mail before. Because <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, so here, oh my God. <sighs> you guys, look at the coordinating fabric. <sighs> look at that. I'm not gonna cry, but I kinda want to. This is the little thread catcher. Look at that fabric. The coordinating fabric. Now she picked this out herself. And it shimmers. 
It's gold metallic. The little chevrons are gold metallic. Oh, I'm so over it. So, this is the little thread catcher. Little square bottom. Oh my gosh. My grime guards. This is the 8 by 8 And you see where she wrote it. Her work is exquisite. I'm telling you. I can't sew, but I know a good seam when I see one. Very well made, you guys. Here's my 11 by 11. Trying to see if I have a whatchamacallit anywhere. That's my 11 by 11 grime guard. So excited! <gasps> okay, I'm gonna wait for the project bag. Here's the accessory bag with the zipper and it's a little tassel. Oh, Jan. And then the interior. Oh, you guys. Oh. Look at it. Look at it. Look what she did. It's like, almost like a faux leather. It's like, it's not fabric fabric. This trim is like a faux leather. Oh, and the little tassels. And her little tag inside. <sighs> I am verklempt. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. I don't even I don't even I don't even know what to do with myself right now. This is absolutely breathtaking. Jan, I don't know if you watch, but you have a repeat customer, my dear. I can't get over this project bag. It's I can't get over that material. Can you see that? It's like it's like faux leather. It's like vinyl-y. I can't I can't like I can't, this is unbelievable. Okay, I'm going to put that down. Jan stitch and necessities. Mm. I am happy. I'm very happy. All right, so the other thing that was in the mail. So this is gonna kind of lead me up to, this was in the mail today, so. Might as well give some shout outs right now because this is because of a new floss tuber that I found. Off the Grid Needle Arts. Her name is Caroline, she lives in Canada. Off the Grid Needle Arts, I stumbled on her channel by accident and I was binge watching somebody that you guys all know and love and I was so late to the game. Um, but I was binge watching and I found, I accidentally clicked on Off The Grid Needle Arts. And the first thing I noticed was her video opened up and it was like the same music, excuse me, that Jessie Marie plays at the beginning of her video. But her music kept playing while she was visible and she was sipping her coffee and looking into the camera. And I'm like, is thinking, I'm, I'm, 
I'm in because I'm waiting for something to happen. And it was just the music playing and her just relaxing and smiling and sipping her coffee. And I was sitting there watching like, okay, something's about to happen here. So then the music stops. This is video number four I'm talking about. If you guys tune into her, which I hope you do, because she's fantastic. Um, video number four is the one I clicked on. So then the music stops and she says, so this duck walks into the library, into a library. And she's, it's obvious she's getting ready to tell a joke. I was in. I was engaged at that point because I don't think I have ever seen a floss tube video open up that way and she told her joke <laughs> it was corny but it was cute I'm not gonna lie it was it was corny but it was cute but she sucked me in with this joke and I just continued to watch and she has this wonderful sense of humor and wit and she is you know, got that, you know, the little snarky, sarcastic kind of humor that I love so much. But she is so sweet and her spirit is so humble. She just, oh my gosh, I just fell in love. So then I went back to the beginning and I watched the first three videos. And it's like she was stitching all the things that I would ever want to stitch in my life. Her projects are unbelievable. They are gorgeous. She also makes project bags. Um, her and her sister-in-law have their own business called Evertotes. Um, so she's on Instagram, is off the grid needle arts, and then she has Evertotes, which is her business on Instagram. So check her out. Um, her bags are absolutely beautiful from what I can see. Um, and she's just a pleasure to watch. So she's the one that I was watching that she reached through my iPad while I was watching and forced me to go on to 123 Stitch and forced me to buy the pattern that she was showing. She made me do it. So, yeah. Northern Expressions Shades of Blue. We have all seen these Northern Expressions tiles. They're absolutely exquisite. Jesse talked about doing the one in wine and orange. Um, I believe that Micah is doing her shades of green shades of olive but of course she's doing them in shades of blue I believe I would assume um, but we've all seen them what I have never seen is one actually stitched and Caroline was stitching hers I'm sorry for the pause um, was stitching hers one over two 40 count I believe and I have a thing I loved like I love like the delft blue tiles and kitchenware I love that look and it wasn't until I saw hers actually stitched up that I realized that that's what shades of blue looks like and it's absolutely gorgeous so I immediately went on to one, two, three stitch, like I said, because she forced me to. And I got um, a piece of 36 count antique white, which I never stitch on. I never stitch on anything white, but it had to be stitched on white because it was amazing. And I got the coordinating dinky dies in sapphire. Midnight.
in dream time. So these are going to be stitched 1 over 2 on 36 count. Um, somewhere along the lines, guys, my taste in fabric has changed to the point where I prefer stitching on number one, linen, go figure, but number two, higher counts of linen, 36, 40, I see now, I, I've seen the light, I see why it is so wonderful to stitch on one over two. It's absolutely amazing. It's such a, a wonderful stitch. Um, that's what I'm doing with the peacocks and posies. Um, and it seems like whenever I get patterns, I seem to be ordering 36 and 40 count now. That's my jam. Um, this is also how you know you have a problem. I have a piece of 36 count in winter moon. It's a nice cream color. I know I purchased this for something. Something very specific. Uh, because when Caroline was forcing me um, and threatening me with bodily harm to make me buy the shades of blue pattern and the threads and the fabric, when she was forcing me to do that, I remember going onto the cross stitch calculator to do measurements to see if something would fit on that 36 piece, 36 count piece of Winter Moon. And for the life of me, I don't know what it was. I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm only 43. This, this shouldn't be happening. No, it's not my age. It's because I buy so much crap. I can't keep up with the, what, what I'm ordering it for. That's what it is. That's all it is. Um, so yeah. So that's what came in the mail today. So on to... What I bought with my gift card from work. Peacock Butterflies by Dimensions. The kit. Because peacocks and butterflies and because. So this comes with 14 count Ada. It will not be stitched on 14 count Ada. But that's a beauty. Gorgeous. So, McKenna, the lovely and talented and beautiful McKenna, who is also responsible. Have you guys seen how she defiles my um, Instagram posts about my peacocks and posies? I told her, make a list of all the punchlines you can come up with. Because every time I post, I know you're going to have one. So just make a list because I plan on... I say this now, we'll see how it goes, but I plan on monogamous, monogamously stitching this till the end. But every time I post, um, I think on Stitch Mania or Instagram, I've come to not only anticipate, but look forward to what McKenna is going to say about my posts. And I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. Um, and others have seemed to join in, so it's, it's getting quite funny. But um, not going to go into any more detail, but if you read the comments on my post on Instagram, you'll see what I'm talking about. But McKenna, who I have now dubbed the finisher, um, because she finishes everything she touches in like three days. Big or small, it doesn't matter. Um, she posted as part of her gifts that her husband is getting for her because he went on a trip to Thailand on a um, business trip to Thailand and she's at home with the kids so he's paying for it through cross stitch and as of today a brand new pair of red high heel shoes which are very hot by the way um, she purchased and kitted up virtue was a virtue or wisdom by long dog samplers it was one or the other I don't remember which one but she posted it and I love the pattern, but then she made the grave error of talking about the companion piece. So there is a companion piece to virtue, which is wisdom. And I can't remember which one she's doing, but it's beautiful. And it's like already three quarters of the way done. Um, no, it's not. It's like the top left corner and then into the middle, but it's moving along very quickly. But anyway, when she posted that there was a sister pattern, um... 
I thought of some threads that I um, purchased after watching Tracy's video. Tracy showed a video of, and I'm going back to, McKenna, I'm going back to, come, circling back there. But Tracy posted a video uh, showing some threads that she ordered from um, the Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. And these are cotton threads that are 20 yards long. 20 yards long, guys. And, well, here. 20 yards long. So, Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. I ordered, there was a, um, a set of them, of her primitive colors. I'm not going to show all these to you individually, but it was a set of her primitive collection, I'll say. It has reds, it has greens, it has blues, it has golds, it has browns, it has all the colors all the colors 20 yards skeins very reasonably priced hand dyed um, there was a set she was advertising on eBay which I purchased and when I saw McKenna's post and then I saw the um, companion piece to that I thought to myself I would use these colors for those patterns together. You come in a nice box like that. Now the colors that are called for um, on Wisdom and Virtue are bright, brighter than um, the color palette that I would normally go for, but they're beautiful. But the way I would want to do it is more muted colors. So I thought of these threads and I thought it would be amazing. So I ordered two pieces of 40 count doubloon. Um, for wisdom and virtue. I don't know if everybody knows this, but for those of you that prefer a PDF over a paper copy or prefer sorry my phone's gone off or prefer both like I do the long dog sampler patterns I did not realize until I got um, death by cross stitch that they came in PDF but they do and ever since then I also got castles in the air and life after death on PDF and you can get them by emailing Jules. I'll put her email below, but I think it's Jules at Long... Mm -mm, I might be making that up. It's not Jules at LongDogSamplers.com. It's by emailing Julia. I'll put her email address below. But you can email her and ask her for the PDF. And you'll have the PDF version. You don't have to order the hard copy and wait for it. So that's what I do. I order the PDF. And I had both of them within no time and I got a discount because I ordered both of them um, so that was good that was good I think both patterns together they were 10 bucks a piece after the discount um, but normally they're like 12 50 or 13 dollars something like that but I ordered these two pieces of doubloon to go with wisdom and virtue um, because the finisher made me do it but actually she said blame it on Joe which was funny because when I blamed her on Instagram she said blame it on Joe and I was very confused because my husband's name is Joe so I was like well what did Joe do but her her husband's name is Joe too so I'm blaming it on Joe which is normally the case anyway um next up this is a pattern that I have been looking at for the longest time um I didn't show you this. This is a piece of 40 count cream Newcastle for an a forest girl. I already have that pattern. Um, but this is a pattern that I have been looking at for the longest time. And since I had a gift card for my job, my job bought it for me basically. 
Music Amongst the Trees by Rosewood Manor. I've become a fan of Rosewood Manor. My gosh. I love them. So this is Music Amongst the Trees. And I got a piece of 40 count Wren to go with it. This one is not as big as I thought it would be. This pattern, like on 40 count, this is a fat eighth. Is that a fat eighth? Fat eighth? Yeah, fat eighth. Um, it'll fit on that. Doing one over two on 40 count. The stitch count is only 245 by 122. I thought it was going to be humongo, like um, Forest in the Trees. Forest, oh no, but like and Forest Grew. No, it's nowhere near as humongo as that one is. I also purchased... I have to take this out because I put the stuff in there and you can't see. Forever by Alessandra Adelaide very colorful infinity symbol and for the most part it calls for DMC which I already have but it also calls for petite treasure braid, petite treasure braid and good works the red works doesn't have a color it's a zero one one by four. I think this is my first thread works I've ever bought. And it calls for beads. So I bought those. Forever by Alessandra Adelaide. I got another Thea Governor kit. This one was on clearance, but this time it was one of the big ones. I said I've always wanted one of the big ones. Um, my first Thea Governor. Um, I forgot which city it is. I just got her Dahlia. That's a small one. Smaller. The finished piece is 13 by 13, but I'm trying to remember the city. It was um St. Basile. Was that it? St. Basile? Yeah. And this one is Istanbul. So it comes packaged like so. Um, I don't remember what count linen. Is this linen or Ada? It's linen. I don't remember what count it's on. But it's one of the large kits. But it was on Clarence. So I got it on a very good deal. This one I have been looking at forever, 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 forever. And I keep looking at it every time I go back, but I didn't, I couldn't, it's so many pages. It's a 30 page pattern by, you guessed it, Rosewood Banner, and it's the ABC Tapestry. And it's, yes, it's the whole alphabet, but each alphabet or each letter it's filled with black work or in this case red work and animals that correspond animals and objects that begin with that letter and it's just so busy and I just love it I love it Tracy gave the suggestion that um, maybe I could just do my name or my last name and of course because I like big obnoxious chunky projects I'm like no I want to do the whole thing because that's what we do right but I got a piece of 25 count um, Lugana in stormy clouds and it's one of those printed fabrics where it's only printed on one side but this is what it looks like not opening the whole thing because it's huge. 
stormy clouds and I think I'm going to stitch this with that hank of gray that I have because I think that hank of gray especially if I'm only doing it like with one thread I can do this whole thing with that I believe because I'm also using it in life after death or castles in the air one of those two but I want to do this with that gray hank of silk I think it'll look very nice so that's what my job bought me um, and the last things I have to share are eBay finds I think that's everything no it's not well no this is an eBay find or Etsy I don't know but I got some fabric and a really good deal it was a really really good deal um, but I thought I would use this to practice dyeing, hand dyeing because it was so inexpensive and some of them I just might use as is um, but it was a bunch of swag art mostly like fat quarters oh except for this this was Charles Craft in 27 count you know just to practice my dyeing um, and some swag art I didn't order a country blue one I don't think, and this looks huge. This does not look like 18 count. It's 18 count Devosa, but these holes are like, like a sieve. Um, maybe it is 18 count. I don't know. But just to try some dyeing. Not to go into detail with that. Um, I also got an old, but new, but old. Um, Charles Wykoski from 1994. Charles Wykoski's Nostalgic Mill. That was a fun find. Um, it looks like it's been opened but never used. Or maybe just repackaged. Yeah, yeah, it's just in a plastic bag. It was never opened, but you can tell it's it's worn, it's old. Um, 1994. Yeah, it's like 23 years old. Jesus. Um, yeah, so I got that. I just, not discovered, but I don't think I've ever noticed Charles Wykoski until Claire stitched hers. Is this the one that Claire stitched? Macintosh Mill? That would be something if it was, wouldn't it? Because I absolutely loved hers. Um, but I loved the nostalgic look of it. Um, but I think that might be the one that she stitched now that I think about it. So the last thing I have to show you goes back to um, just remember when I was looking for an 8x8 cross stitch? an 8x8 Q-snap was right next to me. I was looking to my left, it was on my right. So while I'm talking, I'm going to try out my Q-snap frame. Um, what am I saying? So when I was talking about the Mamalee bags, and Emily was saying that she was going to venture into making her own bags um, with her mom, and I was saying I was going to very nice. Venture into making my own bags. Um, I went on eBay and I was looking for fabric. And while I was looking for fabric, um, fits in there perfectly. This is the standard bag. Fits in there perfectly. That's the 11 by 11 Q snap, by the way. So I went on eBay and I was looking for fabric and I found some batik fabric um, where you get 10 fat quarters, I got 20 fat quarters for $20, so basically a dollar each. Now what I've learned since then is that I think I need a, at least a half a yard 
of fabric and these are all fat quarters but I still think I'm going to make just some really funky bags with it um, and I got some feasible fleece like Vanna said to do but I think even if I just use if I have to use four of these to make one bag or two of these to make one bag I don't know how it's gonna work out um, because I think you need half a yard of your original fabric and then half a yard of your contrast color um, so I'd have to use four of these to make a whole yard but whatever it's still a good deal so these are um, I got 20 of them so I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly but these were one dollar each I'm not gonna fold them all the way out but that's the first one second one I may have to, this one's really colorful. Now one of these is going to be the back of the pillow for my peacocks and posies. Did I mention that I'm making that into a cushion? So I said, I'm holding these up as I talk, if you guys want to look. It's like butterflies. So I posted online that I was going to that I wanted to make them into a make that into a cushion. And then I said I was looking for I was gonna look for a fabric. And I wanted it to be a print. Um with teal and orange and browns and greens and purples. That's what I wanted the print to look like. And Emily posted, what about, what about a nice batik fabric? And it was funny that she said that because I had all of these and I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about using this fabric. So I immediately went to go look, and I am going to open this one out. And this will be the back of my cushion for my peacocks and posies because it has orange, it has teal, it has purple, it has brown, it has all the colors. Um, so this one in particular is going to be the back of my cushion for peacocks and posies so that will not be going into a project bag. This looks like the other one that I have that looked like butterflies. It's like the same colors. So as you can see, if I make project bags out of these, they are going to be like some funky little bohemian bags, which is perfectly fine by me. They're going to be loud and colorful and gaudy and very Letitia. Well, this one's nice. It's like a nice navy. It's really pretty. Coming down to the end of the pile here, guys. So this was on eBay. These were literally a dollar a piece. So even if it takes four of these to make one bag, I can get five bags out of this. Oh, well, maybe not because I took one out. So I'll at least get four bags out of it. We'll see. But that was from eBay. Great fabric find for $1 a piece. I know Emily is on this extreme fabric kick right now because have you seen the Mamali bags? I mean, I would be buying fabric too if I knew how to make stuff like that. And this is the last item because with all that fabric, you're gonna need all the thread and this sewing thread, this whole entire thing was like four bucks. This whole thing was four dollars. So now I am being forced to go in the garage, get my sewing machine out, remember how to rethread it, and make all the things. And that's what I'm going to do. 
So that was my big fat obnoxious haul. This alone, oh my gosh, this alone was one hour and three minutes. So that alone was a YouTube video. So I am going to load this puppy up with whatever I have on my camcorder. Um, I think I have a couple of shots that I took from um, my peacocks and posies. And I think somebody asked me for pictures of Frankie and Bella. And I think I got some pictures of videos of Frankie on there. I'm really not sure. But if I move this stuff around and pause this, I might be able to get a shot of Frankie in here for you. Because this little butt is right there. So hold on. Alright guys. This is my little Frankie man. He is struggling to get away from me. He is very unhappy because I just woke him up. But this is my sweet little Frankie man. His name is Frankie, but I call him Frankie Man or Frenchismo. Yeah, he's really fighting me right now. He's probably going to take down the whole thing. He was sleeping soundly. He's very upset. Um, and he shut all over me. But yeah, his name is Frankenstein. Because when we adopted him from the animal shelter, they gave him all his shots, they fixed him, but it looks like they were confused about whether he was a boy or a girl because he had um, a, a stitched area in the middle of his belly, like they were going in to remove his lady parts, but he's a little boy. Um, and I don't think they did that for a microchip. Um, he is micro, they did put a microchip in him. Um, but because he had that scar there and he had um, the scar from where he was correctly neutered, um, we called him Frankenstein. So, But he's safe now, so it had a happy ending um, and has not had any surgery since. But that was Frankie. So... It was short-lived, but he doesn't like to be held. He's a little love bug, but he doesn't like to be held. Um, so that's all I have for now. Again, happy World Cross Stitch good day, and I hope you're stitching, and I hope you're healthy and you're happy, and that's enough, isn't it? Happy stitching, guys. Bye. Mm-hmm. That's my foot, Frankie. Do you care? No. You don't care, do you? I'm sorry. Bye, Frankie. Frankie. Say hi to the people. Frankie. Say hi. Say where are you? You pretty boy. Pretty boy Floyd. Bye. Say bye, Frankie.